So the credit card game has been changing a lot lately with several new credit cards coming onto the market over the past few years, and then several existing credit cards getting updated features and benefits. We've also been seeing record high welcome offers and overall just more potential value that's out there right now from credit card rewards than ever before. But the problem is you can't really just jump right in and then immediately expect to get approved for the best top tier cards out there that offer the top rewards. Instead, what you have to do is sort of just work your way up by understanding a concept called the credit card ladder, which is what we're gonna talk about here in this video. And the credit card ladder is essentially just sort of a way to think about how almost all credit cards out there can be broken down into five basic levels, each with different benefits that tend to get more valuable as you climb up this ladder. Now, because the credit card game kind of has a pay to play structure, as you do climb up these levels, the annual fees are also gonna increase. So with this video, I wanna hopefully just simplify all the stuff and then help you guys to navigate the credit card system because honestly, it is not really that difficult once you do approach it the right way. So let's go ahead and get right into it here because we've got a lot to cover. So the first level that everyone has to start with at some point is gonna be for starter cards. Now, starter credit cards come in a few different varieties, including secured credit cards, student credit cards, as well as some other similar credit building products. And the main focus with this level here, like the name says, is really just to get started with using credit cards responsibly and to build a solid foundation for the better credit cards we'll talk about later on. Starting at this level means that you might have little to no credit history, maybe you just turned 18 and now you're looking to build credit from nothing, or maybe you've had some previous struggles with credit cards and now you're looking for a fresh start. Most good starter level credit cards are gonna have no annual fee, although there are some products out there that do advertise some sort of a fee or subscription, but honestly, you really could just stay away from those. And then starter cards are also not really gonna earn too much in terms of credit card rewards, although some cards are definitely better than others, and I'll talk about a few of my favorites in just a minute. Now, when you're navigating this first level, you wanna make sure that you focus on getting into good habits above all else here. So that means treat your credit card like a debit card and then only use it if you already have money set aside to pay it off. And also make sure you're paying off your credit card on time and in full every month. Even a single missed payment can really damage your credit score, especially very early on here. So my advice is to also set yourself up with some sort of a budget just to keep track of your spending. And I've got a whole video I did on budgeting and how I like to do that that I'll link to down below if you wanna go ahead and check that out after watching this. Now, one main issue that many people run into when they're looking to get their first credit card is that in order to get approved, most issuers like to see that you've got some sort of credit history, but you might not have any credit history just yet if you don't have a credit card. That's basically the famous catch-22 situation that does frustrate a lot of people getting started with this stuff, but luckily the easy solution to this might be to get a secured credit card. With a secured card, there's gonna be lower risk to the issuer when they give you a credit card because you're gonna have to put down a security deposit of maybe a few hundred dollars or so. And then that deposit will be equal to the credit limit they give you, where if you don't pay back what you owe on the card, they could just keep that deposit. But because you're only gonna be using this credit card if you can use it responsibly by paying it off on time and in full every month, then after a few months in a row of responsible usage without missing any payments, many of the good secured card issuers out there are just gonna give you that deposit back. And they also might even upgrade you to an unsecured card that does not require deposit. Now, a few secured cards that I like personally would be something like the Discover It Secured card, which has no annual fee. And then after seven months, Discover says they begin to automatically do account reviews to see if you can get upgraded to an unsecured card and get your deposit back, like I just said. Plus, you can also earn 2% back at gas stations and restaurants on this card on up to $1,000 of combined spending each quarter. And then Discover is also gonna match your cash back dollar for dollar in your first year, which is what they're most known for. Capital One also has a pretty simple platinum secured card, even though it comes with really minimal rewards but still it is, again, a nice simple option to look into if you're trying to really improve or build your credit. US Bank also has a surprisingly good Altitude Go secured card if you really do wanna earn some high rewards for a secured product. So this one earns 4X on dining and then 2X on gas, EV charging, streaming, and at grocery stores. And then you can also get graduated up to the regular unsecured Altitude Go card later on as well. Now, another option for your first card outside of going the whole secured credit card path is gonna be the Chase Freedom Rise, which is also pretty good because it gets you into the Chase ecosystem and and that is gonna be very valuable, and I'll talk more about that later on here. But with this card, there's no annual fee as well, plus it earns 1.5% back on everything and gives you a $25 bonus for enrolling in automatic payments. Chase even mentions that if it's your first credit card, you can increase your approval chances just by having a total available balance of at least $250 in Chase checking or savings accounts. And then if you're a student, there's also gonna be a number of student credit cards out there in the starter level as well, like the Discover It student cash back card, for example, which also has no annual fee. And this card is pretty powerful because it earns 5% back in rotating quarterly categories, 
companies like grocery stores, restaurants, and gas stations, and up to $1,500 in spending per quarter. Plus, again, Discover is going to be offering that same first year cashback magic program on this card as well. Now, the Discover It card also has a regular non student version with those same 5% rotating categories. So, personally, I do think this is going to be a must have card for really almost anyone out there very early on in their credit card journey with all the value it has. And honestly, in my opinion, the Discover It kind of blurs the line and brings us right up into level two of the credit card ladder that we'll talk about next year. And that is going to be for beginner cards. Now, in the beginner level, we're still going to have cards that come with no annual fee, but now we're also going to start to get into where there's really some decent sign up bonuses, better everyday spending multipliers, and also maybe even a few other features and benefits as well. Level two beginner cards can be broken down into a few different types with some credit cards being just strictly cashback focused, some cards earning more flexible bank points currencies, and then other credit cards out there earning less flexible hotel and airline specific points. Now, if you're someone that really only wants to be on team cashback, then there's going to be plenty of great options here for you, like the Amex Blue Cash Every Day, for example, which has no annual fee, comes with a standard $200 welcome offer, and it also is going to earn 3% cash back on groceries at US supermarkets, 3% back on US online retail purchases, and then 3% back on gas at US gas stations. There's also the no annual fee Chase Amazon Prime Visa for Prime members, where you can get a $100 Amazon gift card with approval, and you can earn 5% back on Amazon and Whole Foods, plus 2% back at gas stations, restaurants, and on local transit. If you're more on team travel, then I'd say you actually might want to avoid cards here in level two that only earn points and miles currencies with one specific hotel and airline. So instead, you might want to look to work your way into the second level with credit cards that earn more flexible bank points. These credit cards include options like the no annual fee City Double Cash, for example, which comes with a standard $200 welcome offer and then earns 2% cash back on everything by earning 1% back when you buy something and then another 1% back when you pay off the balance. On the surface, this might seem like it's just a cash back credit card because that's the terminology that's used here in the marketing. However, if you go ahead and read the fine print on City's website, what you're going to see is they actually say you will earn one thank you point per $1 spent on purchases and then an additional thank you point for every $1 paid on your purchase balance. Those points earned here on this credit card and many others can then be converted into cash back at a rate where one point is equal to one cent in value, otherwise known as one cent per point. Or later on, as we get into level three cards next year, there's going to be some strategic ways we can get other complementary cards to pair with these level two cards where we can then just pool our points together and redeem for travel at values higher than one cent per point. Similarly, the city custom cash is going to be another great option here as a level two beginner card because it's also got no annual fee and has another standard $200 welcome offer. But then the custom cash card is going to earn 5% back in your highest eligible spend category each month, which is really going to be earned as 5x thank you points per dollar. The Capital One Saver One is going to be another favorite of mine here in level two with no annual fee and a standard $200 welcome offer. And then this card is going to be pretty powerful by earning 3% back on dining, entertainment, popular streaming services, and at grocery stores. The cash back earned on the Saver One can then be redeemed for cash back. Or again, if you pair this card with certain other high level cards, then you could convert that cash back into more valuable miles that might be worth more for travel if you know how to redeem them. I actually made a full guide on how to redeem Capital One miles for max value that I'll link to down below in the description. And I've also got a ton more content on the way here that I think is going to be super useful for anyone out there that's just trying to get the most out of the credit cards. So make sure to go ahead and subscribe down below if you haven't already so you don't miss that because apparently only 17% of you guys that watch my content are actually subscribed. So thank you in advance. Now here in level two, I want to suggest that early on, you might want to consider going for certain chase credit cards first if you really want to be optimal with your credit card strategy. So what I did and what I like to recommend to other people is to focus on getting cards like the Chase Freedom Unlimited and the Chase Freedom Flex first. Both of these cards are also earning those flexible points, which again can be really valuable later on with other cards higher in the credit card ladder. And then these Freedom cards also have no annual fee and they also are going to come with standard welcome offers that typically hover around $200 cash back or somewhere around there, which is really earned as 20,000 points. The Freedom Unlimited earns a simple 1.5% back, or really 1.5 points per dollar on everything, which makes it a good catch-all card. And then the Freedom Flex is going to earn 5% back, or really 5 points per dollar in rotating quarterly categories, kind of similar to the Discover It cashback card. But again, you're earning points here versus just strictly cashback with Discover. Now, the main reason I think it's a good idea to really just try to focus on Chase beginner cards first when you get to level two is because of something called the Chase 524 rule. And for anyone that's new here, that's sort of just an unwritten rule that Chase has where if you've opened five or more personal credit cards across all issuers within the past 24 months, you will automatically be denied for any new Chase credit cards. So what that means is that if we get credit cards from other issuers first, then we'd potentially lock ourselves out of getting Chase credit cards for a while, but if we simply just flip it around and go after Chase cards first, we can still get those other cards from other issuers after that. So 
Really, it's just all about optimizing the order that we get these cards in to get the most value here. Also, the whole chase ecosystem, in my opinion, is just by far the most beginner friendly in terms of redeeming points. So as we move up into level three next year, there are gonna be some really easy, but still very valuable ways to redeem your chase points earned on both the freedom cards here when you combine it with certain other higher level chase cards as well. Now, before we get to level three, there is gonna be one more credit card here in level two that I wanted to mention that I sort of think is gonna be able to bridge the gap between these two levels, and that is gonna be the built master card. This credit card has no annual fee, which makes it kind of similar to some of the other level two cards here but the value that it really offers from its different features and benefits is definitely gonna put it really closer to what many level three cards offer. With a built master card, you're gonna be able to earn one X built point per dollar on rent payments without paying any of the extra transaction fees that you normally get hit with when you pay with other credit cards out there. And you can earn up to 100,000 points per calendar year with this feature. You're also gonna be able to earn two X on travel and three X on dining. Plus you get a bunch of other features out there that I covered in a different video that I'll link to down below. But one of the main features here that makes this card so valuable, along with earning points on rent, is gonna be the fact that you have the ability to transfer points to a number of great hotel and airline partner programs that Built works with, and this list is going to include Hyatt, which I think is by far the most consistently valuable transfer partner for the average person. So lots of great beginner cards here that are out there in level two, even though clearly some of those cards like that Built Master card are definitely going to be, in my opinion, more than just beginner cards. But next here, let's go ahead and move up to another level with level three, which is gonna be what we'll call intermediate cards. So with intermediate cards, we're gonna to start to see annual fees of around $95 per year up to around $250 per year, which might start to seem intimidating to some people. But like I said early on in this video, because the credit card game sort of has a pay to play structure, if you really want to go ahead and get the most value out of your credit cards, especially for travel, then you do have to sort of start venturing up to this level. Now, if you're really not going to be interested in doing that, or you really only prefer to earn just cash back to keep things simple, then the good news here is that you can actually sort of just stop climbing the credit card ladder at level two, and then you'll be all set with plenty of great options. So for each person, the credit card ladder journey is gonna look just a little bit different depending on what your goals are. So always remember that. Now again, level three intermediate cards here usually come with a small annual fee of around 95 to $250 or so. And then on top of that, you're also gonna find cards here with much better spending multipliers, much, much higher welcome bonuses, as well as some cards that maybe have better travel protections, access to travel portals, and access to certain transfer partners as well for even more potential travel value. Now here in level three of the credit card ladder, the natural best place to go first is gonna be over to the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, which has a $95 annual fee and typically comes with a standard welcome offer of around 60,000 points. And even though I think the spending multipliers are really just okay here, the main feature I like with the Sapphire Preferred is that we get access to all these great transfer partners, which includes Hyatt Hotels as well. And again, having Hyatt as a transfer partner for Chase and for Built is gonna be a big plus for me and for many other people. You can also combine the Chase points you're earning from the Freedom Flex and from the Freedom Unlimited, and then just pull them together and redeem them using the transfer partners over on the Sapphire Preferred to get potentially, again, even more value than you would for cash back. And if you really can't figure out the whole transfer partner thing, just yet, then the Sapphire Preferred is going to allow you to also redeem your points for 25% more value on travel when you book that through Chase, which isn't going to be as good as transferring points, but still it is going to be better than what other issuers offer in their portals. Also in level three is going to be the new City Strata Premier, which City just rebranded earlier this year. And that's another $95 annual fee card that has some of the best spending multipliers out of any credit card out there right now, just in my opinion. So it earns 3x back on air travel, hotels, restaurants, supermarkets, gas stations, and then EV charge stations as well. This card is also going to give you access to cities transfer partners, which are still very good for flights. And then you can go ahead and combine points from some of the other city cards that I mentioned earlier in this video too, with the double cash and the custom cash. Capital One has a $95 annual fee card in this level as well with the venture card, which is going to be a great option for earning 2x miles on everything. And also allows you to convert that cash back earned over on the Saver One card into more valuable miles. And then again, those miles can be redeemed using the transfer partners that Capital One has here on the venture card too. Now, those were all bank credit cards that earn very flexible bank point currencies, which again is going to give you a lot of different options for how you can redeem your points, whether that's for flights or hotel stays. But there's also going to be a lot of other hotel and airline specific cards that I see a lot of people add to their wallet because they think that's what's going to be really good and that's what they're supposed to do. To me though, these hotel and airline cards really should only be just supplemental cards that you can add later on in your credit card strategy at some point in the future after you've focused on more flexible bank cards first. And that's because in level three, a lot of these hotel and airline cards are really 
just sort of average in terms of the value they provide. Some of these cards might be good for some people, and you might even get a crazy good limited time offer like the five free night deal that Chase and Marriott occasionally run on their $95 per year Marriott Bonvoy Boundless card that might help to make the card make sense for you. But what I don't wanna see people do is just get a Marriott card or get a United card or something like that at this level and then only put all their spend on that one card. That's because if you're only gonna be earning one specific points currency with one specific hotel or airline program, you're basically exposing yourself to a lot of devaluation risk. And unfortunately, that does happen too much in the credit card game nowadays because hotels and airlines are just constantly devaluing their points currencies, but that is just the reality of it. However, if you're focusing mostly on earning flexible bank points first, then like I said, you're gonna have a bunch of different options for how you can redeem your points. So if one transfer partner out there gets devalued, then you could just not transfer to them and go ahead and transfer somewhere else instead. So hopefully all that stuff makes sense, but after the intermediate cards here, some of you still might wanna go ahead and move up to another level with the advanced cards in level four, but I did wanna quickly mention the one single card that kind of just exists in a bonus half level between three and four, and that is gonna be the Amex Gold card. The Amex Gold is really just a card where the numbers kind of either make sense for you or they really don't make sense for you because recently American Express decided to increase the annual fee of this card from 250 all the way up to $325 per year. But with that increase, they also added some new credits and stuff like that, including $7 per month to Dunkin' and then $50 every six months to be used at restaurants that are a part of the website Resi. Those credits are on top of the $10 per month Uber credit for Uber rides or Uber eats, as well as $10 per month for a dining credit, which can only be used at select dining partners like Grubhub and Five Guys. So when you go ahead and add up all those credits, that's $424 of potential value to possibly offset the 325 annual fee, but only if you truly spend money on those things within your normal spending habits to get value from those credits. The Amex Gold is still gonna be a great food card as well, other than those sort of annoying coupons it has, because it's also best known for earning Forex back at restaurants and Forex back on groceries. Plus Amex has some really great transfer partners and the welcome offers here on the gold card are typically pretty generous as well. But again, the Amex gold is not gonna be for everyone and it doesn't really fit neatly into level three cards or level four cards because level four is gonna be all about premium travel benefits, which the Amex gold doesn't really have. So with this bonus level 3.5 here and the Amex gold, just go ahead and run the numbers for yourself to see if it's worth it for you. But in my opinion, it's not a great card for the average person anymore just because I think it's got too many specific use cases. Now, moving up to level four next here with advanced cards, these, in my opinion, are really only gonna be worth it for the most frequent travelers, or at least people that are okay with paying sort of a premium for what these cards offer, like airport lounge access, status, and stuff like that. Level four advanced cards are known for having high annual fees of around $400 and above, and a lot of them usually come with a credit that covers the cost of TSA PreCheck or global entry, which is pretty nice. Then there's also even more credits, features, and benefits here they give you with these cards, which you have to go ahead and decide if they give you enough value to justify paying those higher annual fees. The most famous card in this level is probably gonna be the Amex Platinum card, which costs $695 per year and comes with a ton of credits that in theory should provide more value than the cost of that fee. But in practice, just like the Amex Gold card, the Amex Platinum is gonna be sort of another coupon book that has a lot of specific use cases, which might only make sense for a small amount of people. The spending multipliers here are fine with 5X on flights and then 5X on prepaid hotel bookings. But the thing that really gets people excited about this card is definitely definitely gonna be airport lounge access, which is obviously a very tangible thing that sort of makes this card a little bit easier to justify the more you travel and the more you visit these lounges. Similarly, the Chase Sapphire Reserve card at $550 per year is also gonna be in this level four, and it also includes access to Chase's Sapphire lounges, which are rolling out across the country, and honestly, I kind of like a little bit more than the Amex lounges. And even though there's an easy to use $300 travel credit that comes here on the Sapphire Reserve, which brings the effective annual fee down to $250 per year, that cost might still be worth it if you've got a Sapphire Lounge in your home airport and you're gonna visit that pretty often. Both the Amex Platinum and Chase Sapphire Reserve also have a ton of amazing travel protections and other features like that that I've covered in plenty more detail in some other videos. But if you wanna have some of these premium level four advance card features without really breaking the bank, then two other cards you might wanna look at here in this level are gonna be either the Capital One Venture X or the US Bank Altitude Reserve. The Venture X has a 395 annual fee, but it does come with a $300 travel credit every single year for 
for travel booked through Capital One, as well as a 10,000 mile annual anniversary bonus that's gonna be worth at least 100 bucks at a minimum. So effectively that can wipe out the annual fee for many people. And then this card sort of just becomes really an affordable premium option with access to Capital One lounges, which are also really great. And the card itself is also still gonna be a very good everyday catch-all option because it also earns 2X miles per dollar on everything. The US Bank Altitude Reserve card is gonna be great value as well for its $400 annual fee because you're gonna get an annual $325 travel and dining credit that's super easy to use. And then this card earns 3X points on travel and mobile wallet spending, which includes anything you buy with Apple Pay, for example. It also has a 50% redemption boost when you go ahead and redeem the points you've earned here for travel using a feature called real-time rewards that I talked about in more detail in another video I'll link to down below. But effectively that turns the 3X earned on mobile wallet spending on everything with this card into 4.5% back in value when redeemed for travel. Level four also has some more advanced hotel and airline credit cards like the $650 per year Amex Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card or the $650 per year Amex Delta Sky Miles Reserve. And cards like these can give you status or fast track towards status, plus some other benefits like lounge access or some other credits as well. So if you are a frequent and loyal traveler with very specific hotels or airlines, then to me, the cards here in this tier might actually be even more worth it than the cheaper hotel and airline cards in level three. Then lastly, we have level five here for elite cards, which are just kind of fun to mention and talk about here because 99% of people don't have to worry about them at all. And that's because usually these are gonna be invite only. And the only way to actually get an invite is if you spend a crazy high amount of money or if you hold a very high amount of assets with certain banks. Examples here, of course, would start with the very famous Amex Centurion card, otherwise known as the Amex Black card that a bunch of celebrities and other high net worth individuals have. And with this card, it's been reported that you have to be spending well over a quarter million dollars per year with American Express alone to even get invited to apply. Now, if you do get to apply and you're actually approved here, then you're gonna have to pay a $10,000 initiation fee as well as a $5,000 annual fee. So obviously this credit card here is gonna be nothing like any other credit card that normal people would get. It truly is just kind of a status symbol here because people getting this black card aren't really looking to optimize their spending to earn more credit card points, but you do get a personal Centurion concierge for booking travel and arranging some other things for you, along with some other credits and benefits as well, like top tier status with brands like Delta, Hilton, and other good stuff like that. Now, since I'm probably never gonna get this card, if you or anyone else you know has the Amex Black card and you wanna go ahead and just send it to me for a few days to help me make a video about it, then make sure to go ahead and shoot me an email or a DM over on Instagram. And that's because obviously, even though it's out of reach for a lot of us, it is still kind of fun to discuss and learn about. There's also other invite only cards out there like the JP Morgan Reserve card from Chase, which has a $550 annual fee. And it's honestly very similar to the regular Chase Sapphire Reserve. But the main difference here again is exclusivity because you only might be able to qualify for this card once you've got at least $10 million in assets under management with JP Morgan Private Bank. Now, no matter what tier you wanna go ahead and climb to, just do what makes the most sense for you and your own situation because everyone is gonna be different and there's not gonna be one exact way for how you have to climb this ladder or how high you have to climb. But there is actually gonna be an optimal order to get credit cards that you might wanna learn more about, which I explained in much more detail in this video over here on the screen next that you should definitely go ahead and check out. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.